Hey guys, Aaron here. In this video, we're gonna do a review of our new Robo C2 3D printer. Uh, it's one of Robo 3D's new smart compact 3D printers. This video is not a uh, paid review, nor was it sponsored by Robo 3D. Uh, we just got this 3D printer, and since most of our videos involve 3D printed parts, uh, we thought it'd be nice to show you our 3D printer uh, for those who might be considering one. Also, we're going to announce the winners of the Raspberry Pis from our 50,000 subscriber contest in the next video. The Robo C2 has wireless connectivity. This means that you don't have to have a computer plugged into it when you're operating the 3D printer. In order to run it, you have to load the file into this program called Robo 3D Cura, which has a ton of settings. In this program, you can adjust the settings for your infill, generate a raft underneath your 3D print, uh, change the quality, the print speed. There's actually a huge number of settings that you can adjust. Once you're finished adjusting your settings in Cura, you'll have to generate a G-code file. To actually print that file, you need to upload the G-code file to a server which is running on the Robo C2. The server has memory so you can store these G-code files and print them later. It also has statistics so you can see how fast your parts are printing as well as power usage. There's also a screen on the C2 so you don't have to connect to the server. You can go to the screen and see all the models that you've uploaded already to the printer and print directly from the screen if you want to. When we actually started printing with the 3D printer, we noticed that you can either print really slowly or really fast if you want. Uh, I think the max setting is about 250 millimeters per second, which is extremely fast. Uh, it's actually too fast for us and we had to dial it down just a little bit so that we could get better uh, quality out of our parts. You can also adjust the layer resolution of your parts. The standard layer resolution on this 3D printer was much better than our old one. It was actually twice as good. The standard layer resolution on our old printer was about 0.2 millimeters, whereas this printer is about 0.1 millimeter. This means that your parts come out much cleaner when they print. Another thing that we found that we liked about this 3D printer is that it has a removable base that's held on there by magnets. So there's no clips or anything, and it's really easy to just remove the bed and put it back on. And this makes it uh, easy after a print is done to pry your parts off or smooth out the painter's tape that's on there. And then for a new print, you just simply snap it back on. To level this bed, uh, this printer actually uses manual leveling where you use, uh, fit a piece of paper between the extruder head and the print bed uh, to set a gap in between, uh, they call it the Z offset. Our previous printer did this automatically, but we found that this manual method actually allows us tighter control of the gap that we want between the extruder head and the bed, and it allows us to be more flexible with how the uh, part came out. Although the Z offset is manual, the bed leveling is automatic. It actually uses a really accurate uh, IR sensor, and it goes to multiple locations on the bed, and uh, senses how far the bed is from the extruder, and automatically adjusts for that uh, offset. Also, while we're on the topic of setup, one thing that we found that was easier uh, in setting up on this 3D printer versus some other ones that we've tried was that uh, loading the filament and uh, switching filaments is easier. This 3D printer has a little window where the gears grab onto the filament so you can see if it's catching or not. And also features a button which you can use to release the gears and feed the filament through. And every once in a while, something does go wrong with the extruder it's just part of the 3D printing process, but the good thing about this C2 is that it has a faceplate on the extruder head that's easily removable so you can have easy access when you want to replace the extruder or uh, troubleshoot a part. Some of the things that we noticed about this printer which weren't so great are that the bed size is actually pretty small. It's actually um, about a fourth of the area of the bed size on our old 3D printer. Uh, that's enough for us, however, though, because we're not really printing that many uh, big parts. Most of our parts fit within that bed area and if they didn't we could probably just print them in two parts and then glue them together. Another thing that we noticed was that the bed has a painter's tape piece of um, material sitting on top which is used to adhere the part to the bed while it's printing. However, those pieces of painter's tape kind of bubble off as the printer is printing and then once you're done printing, you have to smooth that piece of painter's tape back down with a credit card. I would expect to have to replace these uh, pieces of tape quite often, and we looked on the Robo 3D website and we couldn't find um, any of them available for sale. So you'd have to go find pieces of painter tape sheet that would fit the print bed at a hardware store or somewhere else online. We also noticed that the touchscreen on the 3D printer was not very sensitive at all. 
Um, it's actually really hard to press the buttons on the screen and you kind of had to use some force to press them. It's nothing like a standard iPhone touchscreen or Android touchscreen. So I can't really see myself using the touchscreen on the, the 3D printer very often. Maybe just to stop the print or if I'm too lazy to get on my computer just to start a print. The good news is the web app is really easy to use and kind of makes up for how bad the touchscreen on the printer sucks. We also found when we started messing with this 3D printer was that there were some bugs in a few different places in the software, uh, not only on the computer but also on the printer itself. Uh, but this may not be much of a problem in the future as they continuously keep pushing updates. That's another great thing about this wireless connectivity on this printer. Another thing that we found was uh, a little unfortunate was that there doesn't seem to be a way to save your projects and all of your settings for a particular print setup on the Kira software. Uh, you can export the G-code and save that, but when you want to go back and tweak a little setting because the print didn't come out quite right, you would have to reload all your 3D models, position them, and then feed in the settings again, and then export another G-code file. Our last 3D printer had a heated bed, and it allowed us a little more flexibility as far as adjusting the temperature and the adhesion to the bed on all our parts. Uh, this one doesn't have a heated bed, but using the painter's tape material on the bed, uh, using wraps or skirts, and the right extruder temperature, first layer print speed, and the correct filament material, uh, tweaking all the settings helped us compensate for the lack of the heated bed. Another thing that we thought was really interesting is that when we looked underneath the hood, we found that there was a Raspberry Pi controlling this 3D printer. And the reason for that is probably because a Raspberry Pi is a lot cheaper than manufacturing their own board in-house. In light of all the pros and cons that we mentioned, we found that one of the best things about this 3D printer is the price tag it comes with. For $700, it's really hard for any of the other 3D printers to beat this one. So overall, we're extremely satisfied with this 3D printer, and not only that, it looks pretty aesthetically pleasing. We hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, if you're looking for a 3D printer, uh, we hope we help you out a little bit. If you haven't already, uh, please subscribe to keep up to date with all our other videos, uh, but until then, see you next time.